Hello, everybody, and welcome. It's John Pace, and today I'm going to try to convince you to use an OLED television as a grading monitor. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the background, uh, how it is that I ended up using an OLED TV uh, for grading, um, what equipment you'll need in order to get started, and how to set it all up. A couple of years ago, I got very interested in uh, high dynamic range video, or HDR, and in order to uh, edit and grade HDR, you've got to have a, a monitor. But uh, at the time, and even today, uh, grading monitors are really expensive. Uh, professional ones run $35,000 and up. Um, so back then, uh, the only thing that was really affordable was getting an Atomos uh, Inferno. I ended up getting the uh, uh, Inferno and uh, tried to use it uh, for both uh, shooting and also for grading, uh, but I had all kinds of problems with it and I ended up giving up uh, after months of trying to use it. Um, and then it was just recently, a couple months ago, I attended a Black Magic event where they were showing off the new Pocket uh, 6K cinema camera and some other things. And I ran into um, a product manager there. Uh, from Singapore who is showing me how they were using an Asus ProArt uh, monitor, an HDR monitor, uh, for use with Resolve. Uh, I don't even think they were doing HDR video, just ordinary video, and he was telling me how excellent it was. So within a couple weeks, uh, maybe within a month, I had an Asus uh, delivered to my door, uh, set it up, and was really excited about it. And now this monitor costs about $4,000 in the United States, but it runs about $3,300 in Vietnam. But you need more than just the monitor. If you're gonna be grading with Final Cut Pro with a, a Mac, you've gotta get an, another device to use with that, and that's uh, uh, an IO box. Uh, so that's pretty expensive here as well. It costs about uh, $1,300. Again, it's cheaper in the United States. It's only about $1,000. But anyway, I started using the Asus, which is uh, still sitting here, and I was having all kinds of problems with it. Um, first of all, uh, just usability problems. For example, uh, the cables and everything, all the ports are in the bottom of the um, display, very difficult to reach. Uh, so. Right now, I'm, I've been uh, plugging and unplugging uh, cables and stuff like that, and it's kind of a nightmare because they're really hard to find. Um, the colors weren't uh, really accurate uh, for HDR or for Rec. 709. They turned out to be uh, kind of warm, and uh, there's the monitor also suffers from aggressive sharpening uh, edge enhancement, which cannot be disabled, and it's quite ugly. Um, so I really had not, haven't really enjoyed using that uh, monitor at all, um, and it was a big disappointment. And on top of all that, uh, the customer service representatives at ASUS are some of the worst that I've ever had to deal with of any company in my life. So I don't know. Uh, I thought I've had this uh, OLED television now for a few years. I've got an OLED uh, C7. I think I got it in uh, 2017. Uh, it's got a beautiful picture. I watch a lot of Netflix movies on there. And I thought, why don't I try using that as a grading monitor? And so I went and hooked it up, and the image was beautiful. Uh, when I went ahead and used it as a grading monitor, and uh, then went, uploaded the videos to YouTube, the colors were just as I expected them to be. They're, they're beautiful. and. So I really enjoy using the OLED, and I'm right now I'm trying to sell the uh, Asus, but I don't know, it's gonna be very difficult here in Vietnam because uh, most people don't have the money anywhere to buy a, a $4,000 monitor, let alone in Vietnam. It's pretty expensive, I know. So anyway, uh, that's the story about how I ended up getting, uh, starting to use the uh, OLED television as a grading monitor. What are some of the reasons that I think you should use an OLED TV as a grading monitor. Um, number one, uh, you've got the best image quality. The, uh, an OLED is still considered to be one of the best uh, types of uh, displays for an image. It has uh, infinite contrast and uh, jet blacks. 
and so it's beautiful to see your images reproduced in, on the best display uh, available. Another reason is uh, you can do high dynamic range video on an OLED television, which you can't do on an ordinary monitor like an, an iMac or something like that. Um, and because even though the, si the size has uh, good and bad, it's a 55 inch monitor, so it's kind of difficult to use in a really tiny room like the one I'm living in. Uh, but ideally you should be like six feet away when you're using it for editing, even though I sit much closer than that when I'm watching movies. Um, so that is a little bit of a problem. It does consume a lot of energy, I guess, uh, uh, quite a bit more than my iMac, I think. An iMac maybe consumes on average about 100 watts or something like that, and uh, an OLED uh, consumes uh, maybe 170 or more as far as I know. Um, the good, another good thing about the uh, OLED television is they're really cheap right now. You can pick up a 55-inch OLED television for around uh, $1,300, uh, so uh, much less expensive than, say, um, something like the Asus, which, uh, again, goes for about $4,000, and the image quality is not nearly as good. It suffers from haloing. Uh, which is a kind of like a white cloud around fine, bright detail against a dark background. Uh, it's got that aggressive sharpening, which is really ugly, and uh, several other things, but I don't want to go into it all right now. I'm trying to forget it. So what will you need to get started using an OLED television as a grading monitor? Uh, the first thing you're going to need is to pick up uh, an I.O. box. Um, I'll show you the box here. Hopefully you can see it. Um, and that's the uh, Ultra Studio. F that's the Ultra Studio 4K Mini. It's uh, probably the least expensive device that's available right now for uh, using an iMac with an OLED television and. It runs about uh, $1,000 in the United States, but it's, uh, again, uh, $1,300 here in uh, Vietnam. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. One of the major reasons that, I'm really, uh, that I really want to get rid of the Asus uh, monitor is you can't really calibrate it. You can't use the iMac to calibrate um, the monitor because it, uh, you want to bypass the Mac uh, OS, the operating system, their color management. And that's why you run the uh, Mac through the uh, Blackmagic Ultra Studio, is to uh, bypass that uh, color management. And that's very important for, obviously, for editing. If you're just surfing the web or something like that, it's pr it probably doesn't matter and it's probably not necessary. But in order to uh, do color correction, I I'm sorry, in order to calibrate the monitor, you've got to buy an additional piece of gear, which is a Terranex Mini SDI to HDMI 8K HDR. It's a broadcast device that has a calibration engine in it. And in Vietnam, it runs $1,600. And I was tossing and turning and tossing and turning for days, turning it over in my head. Uh, should I buy this device or not? And I said, it's absolutely insane. You could buy another 55 inch uh, television for that. And an OLED television has a much superior image because it's an OLED uh, screen, is, has perfect color, perfect blacks, infinite contrast, whereas the Asus is uh, mini LEDs and it's not nearly as good a quality for HDR or even for uh, Rec. 709 as an OLED TV. So let's walk you through the steps, uh, how you'll set up the television, uh, the Blackmagic Ultra Studio, uh, uh, and also in Final Cut Pro what you'll need to do uh, in order to get this uh, working. The first thing you're going to do is go to the Blackmagic website, download an installed desktop video setup, 
Then connect your Ultra Studio 4K Mini to your iMac by Thunderbolt 3. And then connect the Ultra Studio to your television by HDMI 2.0 cable. And then launch desktop video setup. And here you're going to enter the details of your project. For this project, we're shooting 23.98 frames per second and the famous uh, Sony uh, 4208 bit uh, Rec 709. And when you're through entering, then you'll hit save and launch Final Cut Pro. In the window tab of the toolbar, you'll hit AV output. and then go into Preferences General and just make sure that the uh, Blackmagic Ultra Studio is recognized. Now you'll go ahead and press the gear icon on your television remote and in the General menu scroll down almost all the way toward the bottom until you see Ultra HD Deep Color if you're doing an HDR project. If you're not doing an HDR project, uh, you can ignore this step. Now if you're playing HDR, you'll see a flag show up on the upper right hand corner of the screen of the television for just a couple seconds telling you what flavor of HDR you're uh, working on. And you can always click on the arrow wheel of the remote and then hit enter and you can see the uh, details of your project there as well. As far as the picture uh, mode, uh, I would select Technicolor Expert since it has the least processing and set the gamma to 2.2. Anyway, I hope this has been useful. And if you like this video, as always, hit the thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.